Hello my friends, my name is Mike Diggins. Welcome back to another video. I hope you enjoy what you see. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys what I think you need to begin gold panning as a hobby. It's pretty easy, you can do it for under $100 for sure. And I'll show you what stores you can get your equipment at and about roughly what you should expect it to cost you. So now, to get started, what I think you're going to need first is a bucket. You can get this from any hardware store for about $5. I prefer the Home Depot ones if you're in Canada over the Canadian Tire ones. The Home Depot ones have a bit better of a handle than the Canadian Tire ones do. The next thing you're going to need is a classifier. Now the size of the classifier is going to depend on what size of gold you have in your zone. So if you just got small fine gold, all you're going to need is a quarter inch classifier. Now that classifier can be found at panning shops and gold supply stores. You can find them online, you can find them in surplus stores a lot of times, and it's going to cost you about 15 bucks each. The next size of classifier you might want to get is the half inch classifier. You can find your half inch classifier at the same place as you find your quarter inch classifier. I'd recommend you pick up both. The next thing you're going to need is a pan. Any pan will do. I prefer the Professional Proline series pan. These things are really good. I go with the blue color because my eyes are blue and I see the gold and the black sands a little bit better in contrast to the blue pans than I do on the other pans. This is going to cost you about $15 to $30 each depending on what pan you get. The next thing you're going to need is a little scoop. You can get these scoops from any gold supply store. It's called a prospector scoop. These scoops are made of a really durable plastic. They're not going to wear out on you very fast and you're going to get a lot of digging out of it. You use that scoop in order to get your concentrates out of your bucket and into your pan. The next thing you're going to need, of course, is a sniffer bottle. The sniffer bottle is what you use after you've found your gold at the bottom of your concentrates. You use the sniffer bottle to pick that all up out of your pan and collect it and save it for later so you don't lose it. The next thing you're going to need, and probably one of your most important tools other than the pan, is your shovel. Now shovels start at about 10 bucks. They go up to about 50 or 60 dollars. You can find them at all hardware stores and garden shops and those kind of places. I bought that shovel there for about 40 dollars from Canadian Tire. But you can get a good wooden handled spade shovel for 10 to 15 dollars, no problem. Now all of that together should cost you under 100 dollars maybe more if you go for the nicer gear but you can definitely get started for under a hundred dollars for hobby panning now a personal tip that i can give you from my experience is that gold likes to travel along the inside bend of a creek it's a very lazy heavy material so as the water comes ripping across and around here the gold is gonna stay on that path of least resistance, the shortest possible line it can take between point A and point B. You can also see these larger boulders that settle along the inside of the creek bend here. Digging in front of those boulders and behind those boulders is a good idea because as the gold's traveling here, it's going to get hung up in front of the boulders but it's also going to get pushed over, around, and under the boulders as the floods go on and keep that material moving down the creek bed. Those larger boulders are going to stay relatively centered and in place uh, unless there's an extraordinary flood event. So that's going to be your best chance to find your easiest flood gold. Now, flood gold can refill, but that depends on how much gold is in your creek. If you've got a low pay creek, you're not really going to find gold behind these boulders every year. If you've got a high pay creek, you very well might find gold behind the boulders every year. Just last year I dug behind this boulder here, had great results. This year I came back, dug behind the boulder again, had more great results. It was a good flood year this spring and a lot of material was moved through the creek bed. so. A lot of material got filtered in through and around this uh, friction zone. 
Now, the biggest gold is gonna stay in the center of the creek where the highest velocity is. That's where most of your material is gonna stay in action. Now, unfortunately in BC, we're not allowed to dredge, and that means I can't get into the center of the creek here and clean that material and, and harvest the gold out of it. Um, I'm, I can't touch that until, and hoping, the velocity of the water pushes that heavy material into the opposing bank that way. Now, a lot of people say inside bend, always look there, they, they ignore the outside bends. That's a mistake. The outside bend is where your largest gold is going to potentially be. Now, yes, you might have to work through a lot more material to get that gold, and you're not gonna find as much small gold because the small gold's all gonna be littered in on this side. But you're gonna have your best chance for nuggets and pickers and that sort of thing if they're present in your geology on that opposing bank where the velocity of the water pushes that material right into it before getting hit and turned around the corner. Thank you for watching today's video about gold panning for beginners. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, maybe even toss a share out there. Be much appreciated. Thanks folks, until next time, take care.